Do you have content in your app that users need to be able to switch through in different directions easily? Using the Pager component can help add a bit of delight and ease of use to your apps, as it has built-in gesture support for swiping between content, unlike a standard row or column. Add the horizontal pager to your composable tree, providing the number of pages as the page count parameter to remember pager state. The pager composable then provides you the page number that can be used inside the page content. In this example, it is used to add a page content composable to each page with the number and a green background color. Vertical pages are just the same as horizontal ones. However, the content will scroll up and down instead of left and right. It's quite common to want to scroll to a particular item in your page list programmatically. To do this, create a pager state object using remember pager state. Then set the page you'd like to navigate to in a coroutine scope, either with scroll to page, which performs an instantaneous jump, or animate scroll to page, which plays a customizable animation to the next page. Let's talk about a few more configuration options. By default, Pager only loads the current pages that are visible on screen. It lazily composes the other pages as and when it needs to. This helps keep the performance snappy. In this example, the pages that are partially visible will be composed, but the ones next to those won't be. In order to specify more pages that should be loaded off screen, you can set the beyond viewport page count parameter on the pager. This will increase the number of pages that are composed off screen. So be careful not to set this too large as they'll be composed, measured, and placed. In this example, with a value of one, there'll be additional pages on each side, leaving only the two edge pages to be lazily composed. By default, the size of the pager takes up the full width and height of your provided size. But what if we wanted to specify the exact size of each item? For example, if we wanted each page to be 100 dp in width, you can set a page size dot fixed with the size in dp. In the horizontal pager case, it'll apply that as the width per page. And if you'd rather base it on the available space, use a custom page size. In this example, we want to have three pages per viewport. You can create a custom page size implementation, taking the available space, subtracting the page spacing, and dividing it by three, giving us three pages in this viewport. To add padding around items while still having them scroll past the bounds of the padding, use the content padding parameter on horizontal pager. We can set it to be at the start or both sides to center the item with the horizontal parameter or at the end to have the next item peeking through with the end parameter. Another config option is to specify how items are snapped to when a fling gesture is performed on the content. By default, the pager will only allow for one page at a time with a fling gesture. To change this behavior, we can create a fling behavior that scrolls more pages at once. In this example, it's set to allow for 10 pages. Using the basics gives you some great interaction patterns out of the box for free. But what if you wanted your app to feel more fluid and expressive? You can use the state of the scrolling information to animate parts of your pager content to make it feel a bit more delightful. The following UI has song cards, and you can scroll from left to right between the different songs. As you scroll, the card collapses into a smaller state, and the image has a scale effect applied to it. How is this done? Using pager state get offset distance in pages, we will get how far away each page is from the current page snapped position. This will vary from negative five to five for the current page. The value is zero if the current page is in the snapped position. If it's not the current page, it'll be offset by the passed in page number. But as the items move, the page offset changes to a fractional value. In this example, when it's not quite snapped to its resting state, both the first two pages have a value of 0.5 as the offset, as we are using the absolute value here. But as the second page snaps into the current page position, the first page now has an offset of one from the center of the currently snapped page, and the others increase in distance from the center too. This information can now be used to apply different transformations. For example, we can change the height of the composable by taking it in as a fraction of the content size. And as the page moves into the non-snapped position, we can see it decreases in size, and the item coming into view increases in size. Using the same page offset, we apply transformation to the image inside the clipped container. We lerp, or linearly interpolate, between 1 and 1.75, where 1 is the resting state of the focus page, and 1.75 is the state of the side pages. We set the scale x and scale y to the scale, 
resulting in the image scaling as the pager is scrolled to each side. You can use this page offset value to perform many different kinds of transformations. That's all about the pager composable in Compose. For more information, check out the documentation.